friend of mine recently commissioned me to build him a stylized shadow box to commemorate his military career. He wanted it to look like Air Force Senior Master Sergeant Stripes, which was the rank he retired at. Now, I've made plenty of military shadow boxes, but this is the first time I've made one that had to look like stripes, and I've never made something that had quite so many curves. To ensure a good final product, I spent a lot of time making the best templates I could. A lot of time was spent at the bandsaw and bench sander to get these just right. I did a final hand sand on the templates to get them as uniform as possible. Once the first set of templates were finished, I milled up some white oak to make the background portion of the stripes. Both the top and bottom portions of the stripes were put together with mitered joints. I did this so the grain orientation would follow the path of the stripes. Because an end grain butt joint would be incredibly weak, I strengthened it with dominoes. When cutting the pieces out on the bandsaw, I tried to cut within an eighth of an inch or less of the line. I didn't have any double-sided tape handy, so I used masking tape and super glue to affix my template firmly to the piece of white oak. Personally, I love this method for affixing templates. Then, using a flush cut bit, I started trimming out the stripes. Let's take a moment to talk about grain orientation when using flush cut bits like the one here. If you're going to cut along the grain like that, no problem. Say you're doing end grain with the grain 90 degrees to the bit, also no problem. Where you run into issues is when your grain is hitting at a steep angle. If our grain is oriented like this, leaning into the cut, it will kick sometimes split depending on the type of wood, and it could be violent, you could injure yourself, or you could destroy your workpiece. Having the grain pointing away from the direction of the cut will result in a clean and safe cut. So to deal with this when using a pattern template like I am here, it's useful to have a bit that has a bearing on the top and bottom. Once I've completed my first set of cuts, I can flip the piece over to reorient the grain direction, raise the bit up, and continue on. When everything on the lower part of the stripes was going perfect until this happened. The bearing on the router bit somehow lost contact with the template and caused this. But that wasn't the worst problem. Turned out my dominoes were poorly placed. Clean the peak of the upper stripes up by hand. With the upper and lower fields done, I needed to make the pieces that would connect them.
Once again, I use dominoes to achieve these joints. Off camera, I put an eighth inch round over on all pieces, then I glued it together. Then I milled up some walnut for the stripes themselves. At this point, I knew I didn't need the large portion of the stripe templates anymore, so I cut them down to get the individual white pieces ready. The Air Force, in all its infinite wisdom, made sure that all four of these were just a little bit different from each other. The process for cutting these out was exactly the same as it was for the background of the stripes. Once the background portion was dry, I routed in a small channel. This will eventually be used to hold the glass. Next, I sanded all the parts I had made to this point and glued the stripes on. With the stylized portion finished, I moved on to the box, which will attach to the back. I decided to do this in what was probably the second most complicated way I could have. To make the 135 degree joints, I used the box joint jig that I made for a previous video. As it turns out, cutting the 45 degree box joints easily turned 135 degree box joints by flipping them backwards. The peak only required a standard 90 degree box joint, so I used a regular jig. I spent a long time trying to figure out how to attach the cross piece that goes at the base of the flag, and I ended up settling on dominoes. I did have to trim the dominoes down just a little bit where they protruded into the box joint cuts. The box is going to be attached to the back of the stripes with four screws. First I drilled deep wide recesses, and then I put the screw holes all the way through. Due to a mismeasurement, I needed to remove a very small amount of material from the very bottom piece of the box. Without doing this, the cross piece of the lower part of the box would have been visible behind the glass. And with all these pieces finally cut, it was time to glue it together. As soon as I could, I sanded the joints flush to get an idea of how they came out. I then routed in a rabbit which will accept the back panels of the box. The corners where the lower part meets the flag needed a little cleanup by hand. The last construction step was cutting out the back panels. For finishing, I decided to use Rubio Mono Coat. Cutting the curved piece of glass in the back could have been a video in and of itself. And if I went back, I would not have done it this way. I would have made those lines straight. It would have been much easier. Once the glass was in, it seemed like a good time to attach this. I lined the inside of the back panels with blue suede. 
All things considered, I could have trimmed this piece down a bit more before I put the glue on. At this point, I was ready to attach the box to the stripes. And for the final step, I was able to put on the back panels and attach the hangers. The open blue area will be where my friend can display his military medals and ribbons. This is a pretty traditional thing for retiring service members to do at the end of their careers. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.